गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन गुड आफ्टरनून सो दिस इज द फाइनल सेशन बिटवीन मी और यू नो अस एंड द लंच बट आई प्रोमिस यू दैट द पर्सन दैट वी हैव विथ अस हियर टूडे इज गोइंग टू यू नो एंश्योर दैट द नेक्स्ट फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी मिनट्स दैट वी हैव आर गोइंग टू बी वंडरफुल एंड इंसाइटफुल so i take this pleasure to introduce uh, pratik shah founder ceo of specs makers welcome to retail technology conclave pratik thank you hitesh bhai yeah. thank you so to start with you know the first question that comes uh, is uh, when hugo was introducing you and you know uh, i know about your background uh, being a financial wizard and studied abroad and you know you could have made it to the financial world as well Uh, a, a big time uh, success there what made you enter this segment of specs and also to become an entrepreneur firstly good afternoon everybody and uh, pleasure to always be a part of rai on techcon and the other rai events and hitesh sir being a good friend but uh, i am not a planned entrepreneur i am an accidental entrepreneur you know who's just got pushed into this category by chance so uh i think uh, i i basically always wanted to be a professional uh, wanting to work professionally and grow my career at every stage in life decision making was very binary whether it is going to the us or what degree to take and stuff like that but when i came back from the us i was actually working as a research analyst for a firm called coffin brothers which was into semiconductor research and being an electrical engineer quick background my family hails in from the optical industry of three generations my great granddad my granddad and my dad all three are retired right now uh, but they were always into optical wholesale so if you look at in mumbai it's kalba devi like in chennai it used to be a area called broadway my dad used to be a wholesaler of optical lenses supplying to all the mom and pop stores that's the only link i have had with optical industry so far but i was pretty much enjoying my journey came back from the us you know working well as a financial analyst my dad decided that quasi a retirement job is to open an optical store if you look at all the mom and pop optical stores 10 to 2 o'clock go back home come back open at 5 till evening 8 o'clock sunday holiday you need that small little thousand customer base of yours around your house and everybody in that generation used to go to their family optician right because it was more of a very a uh, personalized approach right i know your the optician will know your dad your mother your sister everybody so everything was very trustworthy and sold between the seller and the buyer my dad wanted to open a store in 2003 october 26th when i just came back from the us i still remember it's a 220 square feet store and while he was getting closer to the opening date he had a hypertensive stroke he was about 45 then i guess and uh, because i was working and in bangalore i came to chennai i was with him and he said that you know i'm little stressed out about opening the store things are not happening interior guys delaying you know typical nuances of setting up a store but since he had a hypertensive stroke he had to get admitted in the hospital and he was worried that who's going to do the opening of the store i said what is there to do opening i mean probably i'll sit down over there you know there's nothing you already hired a salesman and an optometrist at the store and the store was called venkateshwara optics it was not called specs makers it was just like another mom and pop retailer in the city open on a high street the doctor told me he has to take about 2 weeks of bed rest so my first love with retail happened over there at the shop floor when i spent 2 weeks over there then 2 weeks became 2 months i decided to engage and marry the business i went and told my dad that i like this category i want to get into this business he said what's wrong with you nobody studies an mba and comes and sits in a shop over here i mean i said look i mean i want to be a part of this business and that's how i actually got into optical retail i didn't know anything about how to sell what to sell where to sell but i started interacting with customers i started understanding what is customer service being a marketing guy i started understanding what it is to run a store you know there will be customers who will come and grumble at you there will be customers who will come and ask you after studying so much as just a salesman at the store end of the day but yeah i mean that was my first marriage with an optical store so happened to be there 
decided to be a part of the business that led to friction between me and my family i decided to basically move on my own my dad said that look i'm not going to really support you on wanting to be a part of this business you either buy out the store from me or you start your own store i bought out the store from him so that was the first investment that i made on myself which turned out to be quite healthy for me so far yeah and the specs makers was born no thus no. i think the specs maker seed was ingrained uh, so 2003 is when i took over the store in october i basically studied the business for 2 3 years very frustrating to see your friends working in mncs with good jobs and everything you could have also taken that route but everybody is just talking right ye kya itna padhai likhai karke dukan mein hi baithna tha to hamara beta bhi dukan mein hi baith raha hai you know people coming and giving you those tanas and everything at family so very sense of insecurity tends to set in over there so i started to study the business and said that if i want to really make it big i should have two stores at least so we opened up a second store again in the vicinity of chennai in 2004 spent a lot of time researching the business traveled to china one fine day spent about 15 days in china to a city called wenzhou i i just got into where the product is getting manufactured you know because i knew that if you want to crack this business you have to see what is happening right one good thing that we realized in this business was there was no transparency even though we make you see clearly right that's something that this business was missing it was like how tanish cracked it with a carotometer for jewelry i were never had a price tag you come in a honda city it is 5000 for you you come in a maruti 800 it is 3000 for you you come walking into the store looking very kind of uh, lower middle class it is 300 for you prices were changed based on every hour people never maintain price we were the first people to actually even have a price tag on the frame and at that point in time there was no vat and gst for i were so people were like what is this you are opening up the market you are putting an mrp on the products i was a single store all the large opticians went against us talking to the brands don't supply to this guy he is going to disrupt the market or whatever but i was like a single store so people really didn't bother you know sometimes you have to be in the cocoon and have your strategies ready before you actually go for a war the vietnam policy right people hid under the kuchi tunnels so i think we did that i said that before i want to actually build a brand the brand should be that resonates with anybody and everybody a venkateshwara optics might not be very resonating to a non hindu a uh, gupta optical not be resonating to an anglo indian so i decided that let's come out with a name that basically talks what product you're selling so i was just kind of brainstorming my own self me and my accountant and you know we are in the business of making specs end of the day so why don't just have the name specs makers we didn't use any o and m consulting insulting nothing this we came out with the name in less than 45 minutes and immediately i went and trademarked the name and we got the trademark so i said okay this is the name and it's going to be called specs makers that's it that's how we came up with the name and that's when specs makers was born in 2007 feb 3 years i ran it as venkateshwara optics yeah good and so that was your first uh... my first store under the name venkateshwara optics and i converted the existing store also which i bought out from my dad into venkata uh, specs makers so he got all the more pissed off that how can you change the name of the store that i you bought from me i said i bought it from you i can name it whatever i want now so right? lessons so, in branding as well and as in when we go through this journey so uh, uh, <coughs> pratik that was uh, in 2007 when you 2007 feb 5th yeah and today uh, after that long journey and i want to know how that happened but today uh, where are you from that first tour of specs makers so today i think uh, sir kind of just gave 50% of what we are we are at about 255 stores today across 50 cities in south you know and we were very clear uh, we are the third largest chain in india i'm sure many people in bombay don't know us because we've not even looked up to the west right the the south itself is so such a large market even bjp feels south is another country so why not us right so i think south itself for us can take 1000 stores we are just about 100 stores in chennai 70 in bangalore 70 in rest of tamil nadu 50 in karnataka 25 in andhra 10 in hyderabad so the plan is to scale up hyderabad to another 100 stores then kerala to another 100 stores and the rest of the south to another 200 stores so i think until we don't touch 700 800 stores in the south we don't even want to look at anything closer to belgaum which is maharashtra so this is what i call it as a carpet bombing strategy and what was the reason behind this uh, pratik you could have easily gone to 
other parts of the country so well. i think one one of the key reasons was very clear that operational efficiency in retail is very important it's not about just putting up stores i mean i cannot put up a store sitting in chennai in delhi in jammu in see you can be a pan india brand but if you're selling a brand but you cannot become a pan india brand when you want to become a brand i i we don't sell raybans gucci armanis and prada so we were very clear that we are not here to be a brand seller we created our own brand so specs makers is india's only single brand retail in iwa we are the bata of specs iwa we do not sell or any other brand inside our stores we design manufacture produce sell only our brand inside our stores that is the reason we are able to provide products at prices which are one fourth compared to brands see when it so many of you are wearing glasses but the person looking at you doesn't know what brand of lens you are wearing today only you know because you paid for it and the seller knows because he's sold you other than that nobody else knows a brand is an aspiration either you feel it internally that i'm wearing a particular brand or on frames yes but on lenses nobody knew it so we were like when we were studying the market we were very clear that 98% of the market was mom and pop stores that is selling unbranded products or deficient products we said that we will create a brand at a price point which is affordable usually when i did a market survey people said agar brand banana hai to mehanga hona chahiye why can't a brand be a brand like a dmart or a bata which is affordable to the middle class of india which was the large market i mean when you go higher the price point the lesser number of people are there available for the market so we i i really am a ardent follower of what indigo does i mean if you people have not read the book you should read the book the sky is i how indigo changed the complete scenario of you know the indian middle class market of making them fly so for us we were very clear we'll create a brand on our own so we cannot get disrupted competing in a saturated market you know now that uh, i am talking i know now that i'm talking to a third uh, largest eyewear yeah. brand in the country but still my question remains you had uh, and you still have brands like and co- corporates and brands like titan i plus and uh, lenscart on one hand and all the other mom and uh, all the other uh, you know smaller players regional players local players uh, spread across the country how do you differentiate uh, yourself uh, from uh, at least the the bigger ones so i think i think the market is large enough you need to carve your space out obviously lenscart has done a phenomenal job you know i think there are about 1500 stores span india we are 300 stores in south of india titan i plus is another 800 stores but it's sometime in the class good to be number 2 or number 3 there's no pressure of being number 1 right and uh, we are a very profitable organization uh, we've also raised capital but we've not like blown out capital to create a brand i think we just don't want to be another me too i think certain people stand for certain uh, you know uh, policies and brand structures that we are so we are very personalized and we are very kind of we have a care approach to our consumers we are not a fly by night fashion brand we are not a zara we are not a h&m we don't want to basically uh, just do a kind of a store that is appealing to one type of a consumer we are basically trying to attack the middle class of the con- india which is the largest market unfortunately today the mom and pops are withering away from the business because the next generation is not going to come in if you go ask any optical shop owner today where the father is sitting who is 65 his son is not joining the business because at one store you cannot make sizable money that a father and son can actually make enough income so the father tells the son you either go work for an mnc or go work for an it company get a 1 1 and 1/2 lakh salary because ye dukan to main dekh lunga so what we found that as an opportunity is india's got 1 lakh 68000 opticians me and lenscart and titan put together are less than 2000 stores so the market is large enough for us so we keep telling our employees your competition is your other specs maker store which is half a kilometer or 1 kilometer away when you yourself are a competition nobody is going to bother about somebody else coming to technology pratik you are a tech savvy person as i know you personally what all uh, tech innovation and integration you have done from a product store operations strategy perspective so i i will back to differ hitesh bhai over here that i am not a techno i am a technology savvy person but never been able to implement and execute technology i mean lenscart cracked it with being a digital first company they went e-commerce first when when in 2010 when they launched piyush is a very good friend also 
I was a firm believer that eyewear can never be bought online. I think it can be discovered online, browsed online, but to be purchased offline, right? So I think we are building slowly technology pieces together, but we are still a very offline heavy business. We use technology for communication. We use technology for customer experience. We use technology for store operations. We try. We are trying to digitize every part inside the store. Like, I I go to the extent that my dashboards in the store are more NPS oriented than sales oriented. So we go up to that level of understanding. I don't look at my Google ratings on five to four. I look at which are the lowest first and which is the most recent at the lowest. So there are customer care calls that happen that connect with me as a CEO. You know, probably I talk to at least five consumers per day. Random five consumers per day, just telling them, look, hey, I am the CEO of the company. I just am randomly calling you. How was your experience? This just gives you an insight because your eyes and feet have to be at the ground. Retail is not a boardroom business. I mean, we don't even have a cabin for ourselves. Uh, this is not a business where the CEO can sit inside the corporate office and the stores will operate on their own. It is on the field business at every stage. So for us, technology for that is very important because we do a lot of data gathering at the store. We just did a recent survey. Did a brand study on ourselves, our competition, and others to understand where we stand. So technology for us is very important, but we are still at ten percent of what we've implemented. I would say if our competition is implemented ninety percent, we are ten percent, and that is the gap that we are trying to address. We are trying to move to SAP now. I the reason of me coming for this conference was the Retech Con, which I told Ritesh why, and then incidentally told me why don't you have a fireside with me. Because I think today I'm I'm amazed by seeing outside the amount of technology that's come in RFID and other products. So I think we want to implement whatever is new. And this is the exact reason that uh, a brand which is third largest in the organized retail in India with 250 stores, and we'll ask him about his future growth as well and plans. But still, you know, uh, believes that technology is the core to sustain the current business, and technology is the core to expand and grow. Without which, in today's world, it's uh, it is impossible. And let me uh, let me tell you this with full humbleness. Uh, uh, Pratik Bhai has accepted that, and although he has implemented many tools and uh, softwares, etc., in his uh, in his organization, but still he's telling I'm 90% below the the best. So that's where many of the retail players, whether they are one store, ten store, hundred store, or thousand stores, are at at various you know, stages in their uh, digital transformation journey. With this, I want to come to innovation. Can you tell us something about innovation, Pratik? How, uh, what kind of, maybe one or two innovations you have done from a product or a process perspective? So I think we've, we've always been kind of, you know, learning new things. We were the first to launch computer glasses when COVID struck, right, in 2020. We were the first to launch audio sunglasses in 2019. We have been always market first. Now, recently what we've launched is, you know, uh, I, I'm an ardent fan of certain products, right? So I like personalization and personal handcrafted things, right? So we are the first now in the world to launch where your name can be engraved on the glasses. Sorry. So you can actually, I can, I can get your name written on the glasses, personalized to you. So See, that's what we do at our stores, right? We, custom and you'll be amazed to see that consumers don't write their name. They either write their grandfather or grandmother or their pet's name. These are the three most important names they're writing and we personalize it. So if it is Hitesh, I can write Hitesh on the glasses. It is not going to hamper your vision, nothing. We are going to launch it online on our website also now in the next couple of days. But it's a laser engraving machine that we imported from Italy and we're doing it personalized completely. It's just a feel good factor. Height of personalization. Yeah, it's just a feel-good factor. I mean, it's not that it's going to Im be important to you, but it feels that it is made for you. Now, I would have never imagined that, you know, the specs which I'm going to now wear will have my name Hitesh or my wife's name or whatever you want to write. That's an individual choice. But that is uh, 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 insight. Yeah, because I think, see, we are in the business of not selling. We are in the business of consulting. When you come to the store, you're coming with a problem that you can't see clearly. I'm not, I'm not selling just sunglasses saying, okay, why anything under fashion? So our approach is very consultative. <clears throat> my, my store manager or my optometrist will do your eye checkup. We have only qualified optometrists at the store. First, they will show you the degree certificate. Sir, I'm qualified. None of the opticians show you the degree certificate. You don't even know whether the optometrist is qualified on the other side. 
because you can also do eye checkup by just experience, right? Just because I've flown 5,000 miles doesn't know I can fly a plane. You need a certification. So every optometrist will show you a certificate. Sir, I am so-and-so. I am certified. This is my degree. Can I start your eye test? Gives you trust. Gives you comfort. Then they tell you what is your problem. Then they tell you what you should wear. Then they give you the range and plethora of products. So everything is very personalized. Why not the final product? Now we are working on the next step where the spectacle case will also have your name written. We are just trying to come out with something where we can write it like. So the more personalized we make it, the more special you feel about it. In fact, uh, among the top trends, personalization has been one of those trends in the last one or two years. And this is a classic example that apart from everything else, even your eyewear now will come with a personalized name, which I had never thought of or imagined. Uh, although it is nothing new, but when Pratik says that nobody in the world has done this. Yeah, nobody has done it in the world. We, we've taken the first step. First step. Yeah. So it's it's a credible thing, uh, friends. Uh, penultimate question before I go to the last one. Uh, how has been your funding journey, uh, Pratik? I know you have raised funds, but you may have faced your own problems. How I did you see, overcome those? Yeah, uh, raising capital is a FOMO, right? Everybody wants to raise capital, you know, because everybody wants to be in the. Today, you ask any anybody that you ask today, what are you doing? They say, I'm in the stock market. That's the blatant answer. Four years ago, everybody was telling that I want to do a startup. So I think raising capital is actually a sense of responsibility. It's not anything else, right? I was very clear that if I want to build this business, and me and my wife are very clear that we will build this business to sustain and sell. We will not, we don't have kids. So we will not, this, we cannot build this business for our next generation because we don't have a next generation. But we always wanted to build this business so that we are a part of a larger business and we tend to carry this business forward for anybody in this vertical. We are very clear on that. Whether it's going to be a large family, whether it's going to be any of the corporates, MNCs or anybody. But funding journey, we raised our first round of capital in 2015. We raised our first, first round. Then 2017 was an institutional round when Fidelity came in as a large investor into our business. We, we've had ups and downs. 2019, March 23rd. We had three term sheets. March 2020, March 23rd. We had three term sheets. We were negotiating where kiske saath jana hai. And evening Modi ji announces lockdown. Right? All the three term sheets were pulled back saying that we cannot fund this business because retail was a shut shop then. We were down to about 35 lakhs in the bank, 1,200 employees, 292 stores, and there's a lockdown. Business is zero. We were not e-commerce, nothing. So you don't have any other choice but to go back to the drawing board and you know recalibrate yourself completely. I mean, a lockdown is not a business uh, failure. It's a macro failure. It has not happened to me. It happened to even... Uh, Mr. Radhakrishna Damani, it happened to Kishore Biyani, it happened to even Indigo. So it's not that something's wrong with the business, it's something wrong with the world. We went back to the drawing board, we made a business plan, we said we have to take certain hard fact rules. We scaled down from 292 stores to straight away 200 stores. We decided to shut 92 stores in the next three months. We decided that we will pay our employees their salaries by taking loans or whatever, we did that. But during that journey from 2020 April, Till 2021 March, we turned around the business so well, top line didn't grow, bottom line grew 4x. So sometimes we get savvy thinking that it's only about top line. See, top line is sanity, bottom line is vanity. Sorry, bottom, top line is vanity, bottom line is sanity. Cash in the bank is a king. So whether you have 10 lakhs or you have 10,000 or you have 10 crores. If you are not running a profitable business, it's not to be in business is better. I think people are now realize that valuations are only a myth. You can value your business 100 crores, 500 crores. You can tell your kid is the most beautiful looking kid in the world. Yeah. Every kid is beautiful for its own parents. You have to vet it by somebody else. So for us, a funding journey has been, we've raised only two rounds so far. Both the rounds were done by Fidelity completely. We are now going to hit the market to raise another round. It might be a large round, a strategic round. It might be a, a control deal. It might be a large PE investor coming in. But the best time to raise money is when you don't want the money. When you go to the market to raise money is when you don't get the price. 
and price is a discovery that your existing investors want to exit and new investors want to enter it doesn't matter to the ceo and the promoter in the company koi aayega koi jayega it doesn't matter the final question this part is about the growth uh, how do you see yourself you know being a big online player uh, that is the first part and then the second no we are not going to be an online player we are going to be an online also player so we are never going to be an online player we are going to be adding stores we are going to go to about 1000 stores in the south i think our aspiration by 2030 for india is to be at least a 2000 store pan india at least in two regions which is south and west i mean the reason we are focused on south so much is because the demographics of india changes beyond south people's uh, patterns of selecting glasses clothing apparel everything even taste changes when you go little bit i mean a basic sambar changes from tamil nadu to karnataka imagine people's purchasing pattern you know so i think we are very focused we want to be south and west that's our core uh, area and we want to be deep dive into every city that we go uh, i would request deris to play a 30 second uh, video deris you can play the video please and we, then we will close this uh, final uh, question I'm happy to take any questions if anybody has please yeah Playing chess is not easy you need to see everything and see it clearly That's why I trust Specsmakers Specsmakers progressives deliver precision power for near, mid and far distances. Checkmate. Specsmakers, the progressive expert. Thank you, thank you very much uh, Pratik. Yeah, I think somebody had a question here. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. Is this working? Yeah. Hi, Hi Pratik. so uh, uh you just mentioned that uh, you are planning to grow from 250 to 1000 uh in the next 6 7 years uh, yeah. like that uh, so uh, we uh, i basically run a software company and we sell to retail brands uh we are into audio intelligence for in store my question to you is that uh, whenever a, uh, whenever we see people coming to the store right almost 70 or 60% of the people don't buy right it's only the 30% who purchase uh how how do you guys at your company collect uh, you know or look at uh, analytics from that uh, segment which is pre purchase so at least fortunately for us window shopping is not an option people i mean people just don't walk into the store to do window shopping it's not apparel right but we have analytics in terms of we collect data from consumers mm. in certain of our stores we put footfall trackers to see how many people have walked into the store what's the conversion percentage and stuff like that but i think the the crux of the matter is india does a lot of window shopping so if somebody tells you 80% is my conversion he's fooling around conversion cannot be more than 40% but now you say a person coming to buy either goes with his wife or with his family so when you say a person to buy is one but footfall might be five already your conversion is only 20% right right so i think there are a lot of softwares now available for you to track as to how many people came in which section have they gone to more and i think that's how we look at data got it and uh, have those things been helpful in terms of increasing your uh, uh, or See, maybe uh, understanding the uh, consumer behavior or purchase behavior at the stores very difficult unless you're not at the field to understand nothing can help you so i spend about two days in a week which is on a sunday and a saturday hmm. at certain of our stores to understand why a consumer is coming to us right because hmm. it is not a it is not that every store will perform not that every store will get the right amount of footfall but you have to ask your consumer why is he coming to you like in our category people buy once in 18 months so my long term value for the customer is very high you know i have to keep reminding him for 18 months until he makes the next purchase it's not like a swiggy or zomato where i purchase every day from it right so <coughs> analytics don't help personal experience at store level helps got it yeah got it. a uh, final question yeah wahan pe can you give the mic to the gentleman out there hi pratik hi sir uh, two quick questions please introduce yourself uh, i am mahindra hingorani uh, i am into retail uh, of food business and hi. a restaurant manufacturing when we say we got into manufacturing doesn't 
necessary mean we put up our own factory you can have a third party manufacturing for you but designs will be yours like today even a mama earth doesn't manufacture they have their own uh, third party manufacturers second obviously people are getting into progressive because obviously the age above 40 is like graying of hair you will need a progressive there's no two ways about it yeah so people are and today the good thing and the bad thing about the market is that the digital device usage is increased so much so much that even kids at the age of 6 are getting glasses so the entry into the category which used to happen at the age of 20 is happening 14 years ahead so the market is multiplied into 14 years ahead of time good thank you thank you very much thank, thank you all for sharing really all your insights with us no no really appreciate Pleasure. it thank you very thank much thank you yeah